Hey y'all, uh, it's Maya Savigny here today. Um, I just had something I wanted to share with you guys um, that God had um, spoke to me the other night. And um, I, and I, I heard him say, hidden in plain sight. Have you ever heard that term before? Um, well, God spoke that to me last night and um, I heard him say that things are hidden in his word in plain sight. So let's just dive into that a little bit. So the, the ones who seek him will find him, right? But the ones who just read the word and don't think, everything in it is is important will miss so much one of the big problems we have as christians you know reading the bible you know we have so many distractions too and you know we we're we're, we're just reading it and we're not asking God or, or Holy Spirit to help us interpret what we're reading and also all the different interpretations in the of the Bible right now the different versions and it, it, it's getting really um, complex and scary because they're removing a lot of stuff um, which they've been s slowly through the years but now it's like blatant removal of a lot of stuff. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's good and bad with the, um, you know, ha having so much convenience, like to our Bibles on online or on our phones. You know, I mean, I love looking at my Bible on the phone, but it's like how much of that has been reinterpreted <laughs> um, and doesn't actually mean the same as it used to mean anymore because many versions are being written not from the original intent of the Greek or Hebrew and then things are just being left out blatantly um, and if you were to do a study on the original language for just a verse from scripture you could pick probably any verse in scripture and go back to the original Hebrew or Greek and you're going to find something probably that you've never seen in that scripture before. This, this past Sunday, I loved it. My pastor had a word Sunday and he talked about Jesus being in the region of Caesarea Philippi in Matthew 16. And that there were many shrines around this place built on a huge cliff and people would come and worship all their gods there. Many false gods were worshiped in this place. Okay. And Jesus chose that place to speak to Peter and ask the other disciples, who do you say I am? Mind you, in a place on a rock called Rock of the Gods. The entrance, it was a huge, huge entrance in, the, in this cave um, on this rock that was called the Gates of Hades. This is where they believed Baal or Baal or however you want to call him would go in and out from the underworld and many horrible things if you can imagine the sacrifices took place there so Peter answered him and said you are the Messiah the son of the living God Jesus's response to him was you are blessed because man did not reveal those things to you but my father in heaven revealed them to you then he changed Simon's name to Peter, which means rock, right? 
which they're on this rock. Remind you, they're on this rock, standing standing at this particular time, talking about this, and then proceeds to tell Peter that on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, where they're standing, will not prevail. Imagine that. In that same place, the gates of Hades are rocks of God. That is the power of the church. The church has against that enemy. We have so much power. And just by digging into that word and realizing, oh my gosh, Caesarea Philippi. How many of us would have just skipped right over that? And not dug deep into like actually where Jesus was. And how that actually brings a whole new meaning to that verse, right? Um, but see that what was something that was hidden in that scripture. And most people, you know, wouldn't look at that. So, I'm sorry, I'm skipping here, sorry. When you look into the original language, there is so, so much. So one word in Hebrew can, can, can give you tons of different meanings, okay? And one letter of the Hebrew alphabet, that's like a book in itself. So there's so much meaning and hidden meaning in plain sight that we need to delve deeper into. Okay? The truth, I do not think any person could possibly understand all that is written in the Word of God, for sure, because it is so deep and so wide. But thank God he gives us revelation. And God has shown me so many things of, in his word. He's given me such revelation of, of things that I'm like, oh my gosh. It truly blows my mind. And all I can do is, is say, my God, my God, what have you done? Because it, it, it just boggles my mind so much sometimes that... I'm like, I, I, the interpretation of it and, and what I've been taught or what I just read and then to get like, woo, an epiphany, <laughs> you know, um, I love it. I, I love it when God truly speaks in his word. So it's like God's word is so real. It is the only word, it is the only book that is truly living. There, there, there's no if ands, or buts. God's word is a living word. It is truth. It is, it is, it is accurate. And there is so much hidden in plain sight. The word of God will speak, it will speak back to you, maybe not like literally, but it will speak. Jesus is the word. Jesus is in us if you've accepted him in your life. He truly wants to speak to you and he wants to you know him in a in in a in a deep deep relationship, and the Holy He's given us the Holy Spirit to help us understand and comprehend the Word. And I don't think I don't think anyone's ever going to comprehend the Word until we make it to heaven and go, "My God, My God, what did you do?" Because you're amazing. 
There's so much hidden in plain sight. And one thing we, we may think all our lives means one thing, and it has 10 other meanings. You know, it's written. It is our daily bread. We do not live by bread alone as, as, as in physical bread. But in every word of scripture, you know, that is our daily bread. God is truly our daily bread. And if you aren't in understanding the word of God, either you, you need to be born again. If you're trying to read the word and you aren't born again, you're probably not going to get anything from it. Because it is supernatural to understand. The Holy Spirit has to be in you to, to really help you, to give you the revelation to interpret what you're reading. It's not just a simple book. Because the more you seek Him in the Word, the more He will reveal Himself to you. I guarantee it. You cannot have Holy Spirit and read the Word, mind you, wholeheartedly read the Word, seeking its truth and not have God speak to you through it. I, cha I want to challenge everyone who maybe has, has listened this far <laughs> into this. Go and read your Bible and do it without distraction. Do it expecting pray to holy spirit asking him to reveal the word and make it come alive to you and then expecting the comprehension of what you're reading and then and and, and ask for new revelation if you've been reading your word and, and everything just seems kind of like Okay, that's good. That's fine. And, you know, God can... Re <laughs> There's so much in that word. And every time I read it, I get something new and, and different. And he literally speaks. And God wants nothing more than to have you know him and have a relationship with him. And, and <laughs> just seek that. Seek him. You're never going to be the same if you do. I pray this blesses you. I pray um, you seek him and, and, and find him. Because he wants to find you and... It's all hiding in plain sight, but he's not hiding it on purpose. He's hiding it for those to seek out. God bless. Love y'all.